The end times are near. Hello all. I am making this video to desperately get this off my chest. In this video I'm going to explain, or I'm going to attempt to explain, why I think the backlash against Metal Gear Survive is not only unjustified, but pretty cancer. Drop your comments now, boys. I also want to preface this all by saying a few things. You can think what you want about what I'm saying if you disagree. You know, that's great. I'm just asking you to hear me out. This video took a long time to make. Uh, you know, and also, if I make a comparison to another game, it's not that I'm saying that it makes it okay for Survive to do. Uh, I'm just using that purely to demonstrate how perception of similar systems or tropes can alter between different games. Uh, lastly, I don't think Survive is the greatest game ever. It's just fine. Fine. You know, like, just misunderstood. Ha! Ah, with that out of the way, now, on to... Fuck this game. Everyone needs to calm down. Now, like, on to the game. How is it? It's fine. It's good. It's not great. It's good. The consensus right now seems to be that Survive is not only terrible, but has also killed Metal Gear Dead. This is completely overblown. Now, I want to get this out of the way in the beginning because it really matters to me the least, and I want to get it out of the way as soon as possible. And that's uh, the, the scores that the game has actually been receiving because my issue here isn't with the scores specifically, but more so the perception of the game, like with the community. Uh, now, just with this, I want to remind you that these are purely my opinions, and you're, of course, welcome to disagree with them. Now, the game is currently sitting at a 61 on Metacritic, and I actually think that's a pretty accurate rating for it. To demonstrate my point, I'm going to use two games that came out recently in two completely different genres, both of which were well-received universally, I think. And the first one of these would be Monster Hunter World, which in my eyes would easily class as about a 6. I think it's solid with great creature design, but I just think having played former Monster Hunter games that it's just a serviceable sequel. It doesn't really do anything to grow the franchise as a whole or stand out above the rest, apart from maybe making it more accessible. I think it's a really solid, well-made distraction. I don't think it's anywhere near The Last of Us. It certainly isn't anywhere near Shadow of the Colossus. And for the record, I think those latter two games are the best that gaming has to display how it's grown and how we can consider video games as art. But yeah, Monster Hunter World, solid, good, yeah, just solid. It's a solid game. It's solid. Uh, the second of which would be Celeste in my eyes. Uh, Celeste is like a solid six for me. It's like a great level design, really tight platforming, but you know, having played other platforming games, I really feel like it doesn't do anything different to differentiate itself from other platformers like Zeo Drifter or Axiom Verge. It's got a really well-told story and solid controls, but yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's just a really well-made distraction. So... When I say that I think Survive is a 6, I think that's fair. I think it's a well-made distraction. It's just a solid game, you know? But it's also not a solid game. Ho-ho! Best segue of my life! <laughs> the game is a spin-off of Metal Gear. It's not a part of the main Metal Gear Solid family. Metal Gear Survive. To illustrate my point, I'm going to bring three other games within the Metal Gear series in with varying degrees of how appropriate they are to my arguments. <laughs> uh, now, these three games all had limited involvement with Kojima, all try to utilize various other genres, and are all not a part of the mainline story. Keep that in mind. This will be important later. There will be a quiz. Uh, now, these games are Metal Gear Acid, Metal Gear Portable Ops, and Rules on the Now, for real, though, well, let's start with Revengeance because it's a hack and slash in the vein of, like, Ninja Gaiden and it's fucking fire. Now, obviously, a comparison can be made between Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and Ninja Gaiden purely because of the protagonists, but that's really not what I mean when I compare these two games. 
Uh, these games are very similar and on like a structural level, uh, you know, more so gameplay level structure, progression structure. Also, this game is pretty much unanimously beloved by the community, me included. I fucking love this game. Like for real, it's fucking fire. Metal Gear Acid is a fucking card game. No, no, it's a pretty huge simplification, uh, but I think it's a pretty apt simplification. If this was released today, I'm positive it would be torn asunder by the hardcore Metal Gear Solid community. But the community fucking adores this game. Me included. It's pretty good. And the game was so well liked, it actually received a sequel. Which was also really good. It also came with a 3D attachment, which you could put on your PSP so you could play in 3D on your PSP, and it made you look like a total fuckwit. Hey guys, Elliot here. Look, I'm going to show you how this 3D attachment for your PSP works. Let's unbox this thing. Let's... let's oh, here it is. Look at this height. Slide your favorite PlayStation portable system in... Oh, fuck. What have I done? Hold up. In... In... Oh, Christ. All right, hold up. Yeah, just be a sec. And then you just use it. It's so easy. Look! Look! Look at me! I'm getting eye cancer! Portable Ops. Now, this one does actually resemble, like, Metal Gear Solid stealth genre roots more closely to, like, Metal Gear Solid 1, just in terms of raw gameplay, but... The gimmick of the game relies so heavily on this soldier collecting mechanic that bears a uncanny resemblance to a certain Pokemon. game where you want to uh, Kojima has also since come out and saying that only some of the plot in the game is actually canon. Uh, so you can kind of take that however you want. Ultimately, I don't choose to count it as canon. But I mean, what do I know? I don't even like Metal Gear Solid 5 as canon. Oops, but we'll get back to that later. Now, these games are beloved by the Metal Gear community. They all ape different genres and they all had limited involvement with... I'm back! <laughs> Uh, and special mention goes to Peace Walker, because uh, during development it was actually known as Metal Gear Solid V. It was helmed by Kojima, and it is fully canon. Uh, it is, however, clearly a Monster Hunter game, with monsters swapped out for tanks in the late game. There is even a mission where you fight the monsters from Monster Hunter. Now the reason I bring all of these games up is because these games are emblematic of the complaints that I'm mostly seeing about Metal Gear Solid Survive. It's not a stealth game. Revengeance. There is no Kojima. Acid. It fucks with canon. Portable Ops. All of these complaints could be said for the game, but you all love them so goddamn much, don't you, you fucking pigs? Seriously though, these are the complaints that I'm seeing repeatedly and put against and like writing off Survive even before people are giving it a chance. Uh, people, you know, rebelling against the fact of what happened with Kojima and the fact that he's not involved or the fact that it's not primarily a stealth game or that, you know, like, it, it is messing with the canon. And even though it is in a alternate universe, the fact that it is still canon, where Acid is totally cut off from the rest of the timeline, you know, these are common complaints that I'm seeing. And, I mean, if I'm being honest, I think that's a little fucking unfair to survive when, I mean, all these other games that we fucking love so much have all of the other same problems as Survive has. It's a fucking problem, and it's fucking unfair to the fucking game. Rules of Rules of What's su surprised me, though, is that now having finished Survive, one of the things that impressed me the most is how well it actually continues the themes of the latter Metal Gear Solid games. When the Metal Gear Solid saga ended with 4, the theme was that war had changed and how Snake didn't fit into this new world of warfare. War has changed. Our time has ended. Our war is over. He was a soldier of the past, and his kind had mostly died out with Raiden being the obvious parallel. Raiden was desperately wanting to become like the legendary Solid Snake in 2, like in Metal Gear Solid 2, but like ultimately he had to adapt to the times and how warfare was changing. The themes of Revengeance furthered this by demonstrating how the war economy had changed even further. 
and by making the sacrifices that he did, Raiden ultimately did become the pseudo-Snake of his era, becoming the ultimate soldier. Snake could not operate in Revengeance's world. Nano machines were a big part of this, despite the memes. Nano machines changed warfare in that universe. Survive actually makes a huge effort to show a world that continues the themes of those latter Metal Gear Solid games. And it brings them to an extreme in a way that actually bookends the series in a really bittersweet and satisfying way. Some people complain about the escalation in Revengeance, but I actually think it's, it's fitting with the themes of Metal Gear Solid 4 and you know that, that progression of escalation. And I think Metal Gear Solid Survive actually continues and does just, a, just as good of a job as it could have with showing the absolute extreme of this world. I think ultimately the themes of the series were wrapped up in a way that Metal Gear Solid V and Kojima failed to do. And speaking of Kojima, oh my god, he wasn't involved in the game! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Whatever. This was inevitable. You cunts had since Metal Gear Solid 2 to prepare for this. Get over it. Metal Gear was never going to end when Kojima left. That being said, I want to say some things about the man and Metal Gear Solid 5 that might be a bit controversial. Now, I don't want to cover all of the bad press Konami got for the way in which they dropped Kojima because, for the most part, I actually believe it was deserved, like the flack that they received, you know, for the most part. That being said, instead of releasing a finished game, Kojima spent his time creating an entire engine, implementing useless multiplayer, adding 101 useless gameplay gimmicks into Metal Gear Solid 5 instead of completing the game's fucking story. A new engine was not required. The gameplay gimmicks were not required. If there was one thing that Metal Gear is not known for, it's killer controls and tight gameplay. And if anyone wants to disagree with that, they re-released Metal Gear Solid 3 because the gameplay was so fuck. There is a huge misunderstanding of what the fans love. And despite the reputation for being totally impenetrable it's the story anyway i'm losing track here the, look kojima left they made a spin-off this isn't metal Gear solid 6 everyone calm just for a moment me included i need to calm down speaking of the gameplay yeah let's talk gameplay look the gameplay in survive is clunky i'm not gonna disagree with that but as i've stated earlier the fans have never ever ever fucking cared about having to hold two can hold two buttons and press another just to shoot a gun in first person looking at you metal gear solid 4 and look there is a point to be made about the clunkiness of the melee weapons and how that affects a very gameplay-heavy experience. However, I'm not seeing this as a very common complaint. Also, yes, the writing is clunky in the game. So is it in Metal Gear Solid 1, and Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3, and Metal Gear Solid 4, and Metal Gear Solid 5. The corridor's full of microwaves. One of us is enough. My body is a machine. I can take it. Fight me, cunt. And there's microtransactions. And you know what? That's still pretty shitty. I shouldn't defend that. It is fucked. In my books, it's okay to deduct marks from the get-go for that kind of shit. That being said, it's not going to kill the franchise like some outlets are claiming. Huh. Now, I'm going to make a really hard transition here. There is a game in the series which I believe really is irredeemably bad and ultimately damages the Metal Gear Solid franchise as a whole. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 5! The phantom pain in my dick! Now, look, I put 200 hours into this fucking game. It's a bad game. Obviously, I fucking hate it. Look, retroactively, I'm probably a little bit too harsh on the old Phantom Pain, but it commits way too many sins, and I still like to believe it's not canon. <laughs> so let's go through them quickly. The trailers lied about the content. Kojima lied about the content. It retroactively fucks the canon of Metal Gear Solid 3. It's dumb. It's pandering. The game isn't fucking finished. Why aren't people more fucked off about this? Oh yeah, 
That's right. Rocket to punch! The game is stuffed to the fucking gills with stupid shit, but Kojima couldn't spend more time he needed to finish the fucking final mission? But Elliot, Konami wouldn't let him finish the game. Fuck off, cunt. Mr. I'm back. Had enough time to make fucking quiet finger fuck herself in the rain, but couldn't close out the story of Eli and Snake and instead just made half-finished fucking cutscenes on the bonus disc in the collector's edition. Fuck you. Metal Gear Solid 5 plays great, but totally betrays every fucking Metal Gear Solid game and it gets to wear the I'm canon hat. I mean, fucking Revengeance does more for canon than 5, and people seem to think that game's a disgrace. Fuck this game too. Also, the game had microtransactions. Look, that's it. I'm done. Now, look, I don't want to get specifically into the things I like about Survive. My point of this video is to explain why I'm upset at the way that Survive's picture has been painted in the media and by the fans. It's unfair. The game is, frankly, a solid 6. It's like a real six, though, not like an IGN six. Wait, what the fuck?